own struggles uh, with my own health and my own wellness. And turning point for me was when I was in my mid-30s and I was in church and I was in a praise and worship service and everyone was singing, we're praising God. And I'm rehearsing over in my head all of the things that God had delivered me from. And I mean, I'm really kind of bragging to myself. I'm like, oh, you don't struggle with alcohol anymore. You don't struggle with weed and, and cigarettes aren't a problem and cocaine is not a problem. And God spoke to me and he said, daughter, all you've done is trade one addiction for another. Now food is your drug of choice. Wow. And it was, he was so clear to me. I turned expecting to see him standing there. And I, I mean, I was literally like, what are you saying? Like, I, you know, I mean, I felt like I had been hit with a ton of bricks, but I knew that if God thought it was important enough to interrupt my bride fest, that I had to do something about it. And so that's really when my journey has started. And I call it a journey because I don't like to call it a diet because diets have expiration dates. Right. Yeah. My journey is going to end when I take my last breath. I'm going to be on this journey for the rest of my life. So today, um, I really just want to talk to you from a biblical and a practical standpoint on the importance of taking care of your body, what you put in your body, being physically active. You have to come to the understanding that it is God's will um, for us to be healthy and, and well in every area of our life, not just spiritual, not just on our jobs. He wants us to be whole and complete. Um, Psalms 91 16 says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. If you look up the word salvation in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, the translation for salvation includes healing, health, deliverance, rescue, safety, protection, and provision. So our salvation goes far beyond us just getting into heaven. Our salvation includes all of those things that I mentioned. We won't have to worry about healing and protection and provision in heaven. We'll have our glorified bodies. We won't have to worry about working out then. But we need to be working out right now. So for many of us, what I, I want to talk about is just discipline. A lot of times we have the discipline to, to live a life for Christ, but we don't apply that same discipline when it comes to taking care of our bodies. We get out of church on Sunday, we have no discipline when we get to the buffet line. We get home, we have no discipline. We sit on the couch all day and we eat chips and we eat ice cream and we destroy our bodies. And we can't just focus on the spiritual, we have to focus on the natural as well. Um, being lazy, being sedentary, not pleasing to God at all. Our bodies are fine-tuned machines. Our bodies were meant for movement. We were not meant to just sit on the couch and the only form of exercise we get is running around the church on Sunday right. or walking from the couch to the refrigerator. That's not what, you know, that's not God's will for our lives. We've taken 1 Timothy 4, 8 to the extreme for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable under all things, having promise of the life that is now and that of which is to come. God isn't saying for us not to exercise now. We have to exercise right now. That's the only way that we're going to live a long and healthy and productive life. It's never going to be God's will for you to struggle with food addictions. It's never going to be God's will for us to be unhealthy and, and overweight because of what we're doing to ourselves. I'm not talking about things that are hereditary. Some of us come from families where we deal with issues because of things that are in our DNA. I come from a family where on both sides of my family, there's high blood pressure. On both sides of my family, there's diabetes. But that's, that's not an excuse for me to say, oh, well, I watched almost all of my aunts and uncles on my dad's side of the family die from high blood pressure related illnesses. I have one uncle that's alive and he's the only one that drinks and smokes. But all those that were saved, that were living a life for the Lord, heart attacks, stroke, or aneurysm. Wow. Because you know what? They lived for God, but they ate whatever they wanted to eat. Right. They lived for God, but they didn't exercise. Right. I had an aunt leading praise and worship and collapsed in the pulpit, oh, no. never regained consciousness. And so this is what I grew up seeing, and I didn't want this for my life. So I decided to make some changes. I have, my doctor about 15 years ago diagnosed me with high blood pressure. And you have to understand, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat fried foods, I don't eat meat. I really am, am very conscious about what I eat. So when he told me that, I was mortified, because I was like, what do you mean? I said, you mean I could be eating chicken this whole time? <laughs> and he was just like, no. He's like, you know, he said, unfortunately, it's because it runs on both sides of your family. But when he put me on the medication, my goal was, okay, you know what? I still have to do everything that I can to get off of this medication. I'm not gonna just go out and continue to eat foods high in salt because I'm on the medication. So I went back to the drawing board. I retweaked my diet. I looked at everything that I was eating and I realized even some of the vegetarian stuff was high in sodium. So I had to start all over. I have since, now when he first diagnosed me, my blood pressure was 140. Right now my blood pressure runs about 100. 
And, and even since I've been back, I moved back from Nashville in June of, no, July of this year. Um, when, I, when I got back, my blood pressure was running about 116, between 116 and 120. Since I've been back, I've dropped, dropped another 16 pounds. So the blood pressure has lowered because weight really has an impact on, on your blood pressure.